This presentation is an introduction to the ISC Squared Certified Authorization Professional, or CAP, exam. The CAP exam is composed of seven domains. There's a three-hour time limit to complete the 125 multiple-choice questions. You must score a passing grade of 700 of 1,000, or a 70%, to pass the exam. The exam is available at a Pearson View Testing Center in English only. Candidates must have a minimum of two years cumulative paid full-time work experience in one or more of the seven domains of the CAP Common Body of Knowledge. A candidate that does not have the required experience to become a CAP may become an associate of ISC Squared by successfully passing the CAP examination. The associate of ISC Squared will then have three years to earn the two years of required experience. The exam fee for the CAP in the United States is $599. The exam is scheduled to change in October of 2018. This presentation covers both the old exam requirements as well as the new requirements after October 15th. Before October 15th, the domains of the CAP exam are the risk management framework with a weight of 20%, categorization of information systems at 8%, selection of security controls at 13%, security control implementation at 10%, security control assessment at 19%, information system authorization at 13%, and monitoring of security controls at 17%. After October 15th, the domains change to information security risk management at 15%, categorization of the information system at 13%, selection of security controls at 13%, implementation of security controls at 15%, assessment of security controls at 14%, authorization of the information system at 14%, and continuous monitoring at 16%. Domain 1 is reduced from six subject areas to three subject areas with the new test. Prior to October 15th, the subjects are Describe the risk management framework. Describe and distinguish between the RMF steps. Identify roles and responsibilities. Understand and describe how the RMF process relates to other items. Understand the relationship between the RMF and the SDLC. Understand legal, regulatory, and other security requirements. After October 15th, the subject areas include understand the foundation of organization-wide information security risk management program, understand risk management program processes, and understand regulatory and legal requirements. The following slides highlight the detailed changes within each subject area. The second domain is modified slightly. It goes from three subject areas to two subject areas. Before October 15th, the subject areas are categorize the system, describe the information system, including the security authorization boundaries, and register the system. After October 15th, the subject areas are define the information system and determine the categorization of the information system. The following slides provide additional detail on these subject areas. Domain 3 remains relatively unchanged with slight modifications to the verbiage of the subject areas. Prior to October 15th, the subject areas are 
identify and document common controls, select, tailor, and document security controls, develop security control monitoring strategy, and review and approve the security plan. After October 15th, the subject areas are identify and document baseline and inherited controls, select and tailor security controls, develop security control monitoring strategy, and review and approve the security plan. The following slides provide details of the topics covered in each of the subject areas. Again, Domain 4 remains relatively unchanged. Prior to October 15th, the subject areas are Implement Selected Security Controls, Document Security Control Implementation. After October 15th, the subject areas are Implement Security Controls and Document Security Control Implementation. The following slides provide detailed information on the topic areas in these subjects. Domain 5 has a slight modification with the combination of the first two subject areas. Prior to October 15th, the subject areas are Prepare for Security Control Assessment, Develop Security Control Assessment Plan, Assess Security Control Effectiveness, Develop Initial Security Assessment Report or SAR, Review Interim SAR and Perform Initial Remediation Actions, and develop final SAR and optional addendum. After October 15th, the subject areas are prepare for security control assessment, conduct security control assessment, prepare initial security assessment report, review interim security assessment report, and perform initial remediation actions, and develop final security assessment report and optional addendum. The following slides provide detailed information about the topics in each of the subject areas. Domain 6 will remain relatively unchanged with the removal of one of the subject areas. Determine the acceptability of risk. Prior to October 15th, the subject areas will be Develop Plan of Action and Milestones, Assemble Security Authorization Package, Determine Risk, Determine the Acceptability of Risk, and Obtain Security Authorization Decision. After October 15th, the subject areas are Develop the Plan of Action and Milestones, Assemble the Security Authorization Package, Determine Information System Risk, Make Security Authorization Decision. The following slides provide detailed information of the tasks in each of the subject areas. Domain 7 remains unchanged. Prior to October 15th, the subject areas are Determine Security Impact of Changes to System and Environment, Perform Ongoing Control Assessments, Conduct Ongoing Remediation Action, Update Key Documents, Perform Periodic Security Status Reporting, Perform Ongoing Risk Determination and Acceptance, and Decommission and Remove the System. After October 15th, the subject areas are Determine Security Impact of Changes to Information System and Environment, Perform Ongoing Security Control Assessment, Conduct Ongoing Remediation Actions, Update Documentation, Perform Periodic Security Status Reporting, Perform Ongoing Information System Risk Acceptance, and Decommission the Information System. The following slides provide detailed information about the tasks in each of the subject areas.
This slide provides a listing of the references available for the CAP exam preparation. If you would like additional training on the RMF and CAP exam, Cyber Recon's online lab and training program provide an excellent resource for preparing for this exam and work in the RMF field. This presentation is part of the Cyber Recon RMF lab. In addition to these videos, the lab uses multimodal instruction to drive home the RMF process through the use of videos, learning games, practice quizzes, weekly instructor interaction, an updated RMF book, an updated RMF lab guide, and hands-on experience in a simulated live environment where you practice the techniques you're learning. For a limited time, we're allowing full access to all of the resources available in Step 1 of the Cyber Recon RMF Lab. Click the tile on the right to understand more about the RMF Lab and see how you can gain access to Step 1.